Hello everyone, welcome to the, the first official video of setting up a real quick SSL VPN tunnel on R48. So, uh, uh, just as mentioned in the introduction, uh, in this video we're just simply going to manipulate the FortiGate and get everything set, it, set up there to get a web portal up and running and a VPN tunnel up and running. And then, in the next video, we're going to test things out. So, uh, let's continue by going onto our support PC. And as you guys can see, I'm already logged into the FortiGate here, which is kind of kind of nice. So, um, so just as an understanding here, most of our traffic, all right, most of our traffic is going out to one of our primary WAN connector connections. Okay, so this is going to be port one. I'm going to utilize having a second WAN connection. I'm going to actually build the VPN tunnel off of that guy. Why? Well. Um, why not? So, uh, anyway, so our goal here is to have somewhere, and I just made a DHCP pool uh, off of our little PFSense box here to, to randomly give it an IP address, but no matter where they are in the world, they should be able to get back through the FortiGate and access our internal resources. So, let's go ahead and uh, figure that out. So, all right. Nope, later. Here we go. So I'm going to go down to my, um, uh, let's see here, VPN, and my SSL VPN settings, and I'll start there. So this is where you tell the FortiGate to open up the ports needed to listen for an SSL VPN connection. So listening interfaces, I'm going to take advantage of WAN2 not being used. All right. So um, now this says conflicts with uh, administrative HTTPS ports for the system. I do not have HTTPS uh, turned on on that interface port too. Usually we do not have our interfaces that are publicly facing have access to the FortiGate, so that's okay. All right, so just a little heads up though. If you did have a confliction, the SSL VPN web portal always beats out the admin portal. You'll have to go into the, uh, into the system settings and change the admin uh, uh, ports. So I'd much rather have our admins though um, change the ports than trying to teach Paul the sales guy to add an additional custom port number on the end of a URL. Anyways, so there you go. And then allow access from any host or restrict access from hosts. You know what? The internet's a big place, all right? Uh, you'd only use this for added security and you'd have to know the IP addresses of your, your um, users coming in. But nope, not here. We're going to let them come from anywhere and, and what have you. So idle timeout that's fine okay uh, in other words if they log in they can't just sit there and and do nothing and stay logged in uh, I'd probably turn that off if I had something like an SSL VPN tunnel automatically turning on uh, when someone booted up the computer but that that's a different lecture so alright so server certificate now we're using the self sign cert right from the FortiGates itself you do not want to use that in real life why well it's teaching our uh, uh, end users to click through uh, cert errors and that's not a good thing and on top of that how much does it cost to get an actual web server cert it's not that expensive all right so but for here we're just gonna do it all right and we are going to have tunnel mode also enabled for some clients and we can specify different ranges of IP addresses to pass along to nat those out or not nat them but essentially route them. Um, now here's the thing guys, uh, I'm just going to have the FortiGate automatically do it. It's going to pick a 10 dot, right? It's going to use that class 8 to find a range of IP addresses not in, in use. All right. And the reason why this is important is because we do not know what IP addresses they're coming from, right? We don't, we don't have a clue. So it could be a 192.168 and we're talking after the tunnel is up. It could be a 172. So we're going to want to make sure we we uh, pick one of those. So, And also because we're using a domain controller, I'm going to specify right to use that domain controller or we won't be able to resolve our internal resources once they get connected. So here we go. That's my domain controller DNS server. All right. So and then here you have to pick authentication. All right. So let's go ahead and double click. And we're going to say, you know what, for all groups, just go ahead and give them only web access. All right. So hit apply. You're using a default cert. I know. My bad. I'm going to have a whole nother lesson on, on certs 
um, one of these days just because man they're challenging and as you guys <laughs> if you guys sat through my FSSO uh, set of uh, videos I love challenges not anyways all right guys that's great so what right um, not a big deal but what about our firewall policies we're gonna need those next so if you click it it'll automatically take you to IP4 and look even even do the ingress for you so ingress is going to be the SSL VPN logical tunnel okay we're gonna call this uh, SSL VPN somewhere I don't know so uh, but the outgoing is gonna pop out to our land 3 our, or our, our internal resources. See how that's flipped of how we traditionally do it? And then the source is going to be, all right, our tunnel addresses that were randomly passed out. See how it made an object for us? Nice. Our destination is going to be, okay, our local land traffic. So now I'm getting a red here because it's saying, hey, you need user authentication. In a previous lesson, we did uh, single sign on groups, we also did remote groups okay I'm gonna try this remote group here I am not going to use a um, a local group I'm gonna use a remote group so uh, I think it was a Jason asked me to take a look at that and you know what Jason great let's try it out okay bud uh, so there we go alright sales and then doo -doo -doo. natting does not need to be turned on and you can be pretty granular here about what they want. So maybe if they are just getting an internal web page, you can restrict that. All right. But for right now, I'm just going to say all. Okay. Natting turned off. Then you can even do firewall rules with them coming in. You know, um, you can also do security events. Now, we don't have any real important stuff happening here. So that's not a big deal. But there you go. I mean, that should be it. That warning, by the way, was saying, oh my gosh, you're using a, uh, you know, you're using a uh, self-signed cert. So, all right, guys, uh, you see the portal here that says web access. So all other groups are just going to get the web access portal. And that web access portal and any portal are going to be defined here. So, um, but let's go ahead and just try that out. Now, I had Paul, the sales guy. All right, so see a cool Windows 8 tablet. Anyway, <laughs> he goes out here somewhere in the world. He connects up, right? And uh, yeah, so we don't know where he's coming from, and we'll just let we'll just let Paul the sales guy uh, uh, boot up his his slate there. Uh, in the meantime, let's talk about these portals. So um, the web portals are web interfaces that give users a pretty intuitive way to access internal resources all right now I'm gonna make one here specifically for Paul so um, let's go ahead and do that okay guys so let's do create new and we're gonna call this uh, sales because it's gonna be sales and uh, yep tunnel mode we are gonna do tunnel mode but I'm not gonna do that right now all right I'm just gonna do the the web mode I'll save tunnel mode here for a second and the portal message will be like sales portal and you can actually do some really cool stuff if you if you have a developer team or if you know a lot of HTML anyways we'll give it a, a red theme alright so uh, I don't want Paul making his own bookmarks bookmarks are just buttons that they can press um, to get uh, the resources and then let's go ahead and create Paul uh, a bookmark so he can just hit the button and get to our internal website so we'll just call this like something like a HR portal or or sales portal and it's gonna be HTTP colon slash slash 10.0.1.10 alright and we'll just say HR portal to submit hours and I don't think submit has two M's in it so or maybe it does summit like summit of a mountain guys I'm telling you last time I ever record videos a whole bunch in in one night so we'll just say HR portal <laughs> okay and single sign-on so uh, this is gonna be like hey uh, will we let them come in or or uh, you know how can they authenticate for right now I'm just gonna have it disabled alright so I'm not gonna do the single sign-on there um, alright 
there we go. So I'm going to hit OK. And now we have this, the sales, the sales one here. So let's go back to our SSL VPN settings. All right. And let's uh, create new mapping. And we're going to say, hey, you know what? If they come over from the sales group, all right, I want you to use the sales web portal. Yes, I know. It's a cert that will give them cert errors. Okay. Guess what, guys? I mean, in theory, that should be it. Jonas say Paul? I don't know. Let's take a look. So, uh, did did Paul ever get to wherever he was going? So, yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. So, all right, guys. So I'm gonna let that go ahead and boot up. I'm gonna end the video here because my videos have been way too long. All right. So, but once we get back, we'll log Paul in, and we'll see if he can access the HR portal. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in a few moments.